question. <laughs> All right. What is going on, you guys? This is Blaze over here at the Blue Chip Athletic Club podcast, and I'm here with Nate from Unchecked Fitness. I'm super stoked to do this uh, interview. I want to just say real quick before we kind of get going, I saw Nate. Uh, he kind of reached out to me, ironically enough, uh, via Instagram when he, I don't know if you were first starting the business or what you were doing, um, but kind of hit me up out of nowhere and was like, hey, like, come check out this page. A lot of, you know, uh, creators and, and coaches and whatnot are going to be in this Discord channel and going to be doing all this stuff. Um, and then launched his business and kind of getting stuff off the ground. So I'm really excited to chat with you, hear a little bit about what you do and a little bit about your story too. So without further ado, Nate, tell me a little bit about yourself, man. Yeah, great info, uh, great introduction there. Um, yeah, so as you said, my name is Nate. I'm the founder of Unchecked Fitness. Um, we are a tech startup that uh, uses AI to um, create meal plans and fitness plans for users. We also um, do some, uh, we do some uh, uh, user like uh, tracking so they can track their macros, things like that, um, as well as progress tracking, photos, um, things like that in the app. So we have a lot of features that um, we're excited to, you know, get to show people. We actually just launched, I was, you know, mentioning to you just a few days ago, you know, when you hit me up about doing an interview for this. So that's really exciting. We're really excited to, to finally get the app out. Um, but yeah, like you said, I reached out to you. I want to say it's probably been like six months or so now. Um, I started this business about a year ago on Check Fitness. Really started becoming a tech company. Prior to that, um, I was focused on weightlifting accessories, um, knee sleeves, gym bags, barbell clips. Um, I was focused on that and I was kind of just sitting there one day working on my business, um, you know, doing some anal um, analytics based on sales, things like that. And I was like, man, it's really a pain to have to try to like manage inventory, right? Like inventory forecasting, things like that. It's, it's very difficult to get right, especially if you have like a seasonal product and things like that. So I was like, all right, well, what, what can I do? to you know try to get away from this inventory management um and kind of stay in the tech space or stay in the fitness space right um cuz I'm something that I'm familiar with passionate about and I was just kind of sitting there one day texting my buddies in a group chat and we always go back and forth of like hey like I got this workout that I just did like y'all should try it out uh, or I'm following this plan and we kind of send them in group chats via like note documents, um, PDFs, right? And uh, they're not the most intuitive things to follow. And I got this idea of like, well, like what, why don't we create an app where it's very user-friendly uh, to create meal plans, create fitness plans, to follow those fitness plans on your own um, with some help of AI to help guide you to, to make those plans. Um, or to help connect you with a real personal trainer who are also on the platform. So like to, for them to write your own plans for you or to um, kind of help give you that guidance and share those plans with people uh, and make it a very like social experience. To put users and trainers all on the same platform to have this kind of information and this data share. So that's kind of the story as to how we got here. Um, and it's been a year in the making, um, but it's been really exciting. Yeah, man. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I want to hear too, like, what is Nate's background? Like, where are you from? Uh, yeah. What do you do? What what brought you into tech? Because big tech is kind of, or tech in general, creating apps and stuff. Like, you can't just sure. pull any, you know, Joe Schmo. I'll tell you a little bit about me, you know, pilot off the side of the road and be like, hey, come here and let's like write this app and let's do this thing. Like, tell me a little bit about, how you got into that and a little bit about kind of your background. Sure. So my, my day job, my nine to five, I work in uh, I work in tech, I work in it. So I'm kind of already in that space a little bit um, from the fitness perspective. Uh, it's something I've always been interested in, always been a part of since high school, uh, middle school, even right. Just working out, just trying to stay active, stay fit, focus on having a healthy lifestyle. Um, something I've always enjoyed. Right. And they, the way that they kind of just blended together was that I've always had an entrepreneurial background um, prior to my 
to my fitness business that I started. I started a mobile electronics um, business selling uh, items on Amazon. And, I've and I did that uh, starting since 2020 in COVID, actually, when it really kicked off and I started doing that. And again, it was, it was in that inventory business. Um, and I pivoted away from the mobile electronics to, um, to fitness. But still, like, man, I was like, I really got to get away from this uh, inventory. It's just such a pain to manage. It ties up a lot of uh, your capital, especially, you know, if, if you got to wait for the inventory to sell through to buy more inventory. So that's kind of how I got uh, over to this, you know, fitness tech space. Um, yeah. Damn. Yeah, that sounds, it sounds super cool. And I definitely want to hear more about the app too. Like, so from, you know, this is just me objectively. Have you used any of the, uh, you know, trainer eyes, true coach, any of those types of apps before yourself? I have. Um, and, uh, honestly, my fiance, she uses trainer eyes as a user, um, a lot. Right. And I think, and the, the big difference I would say between an app like trainer eyes and an app, uh, and then the unchecked app is that trainer eyes is very focused on the trainer, you know, building kind of their following and sending that um, link or that, you know, their app to their, to their specific clients to download it and they manage their clients that way. So like it's usually the trainers bringing clients or users onto the platform there's not inherently users on the platform so the major difference with the unchecked app is that trainers and users are inherently already both on the platform together at the same time so it makes it it's really beneficial for trainers because you don't have to go out and say you know hey blaze like um like let's work together um you can download this app that I have or like download this app, Trainerize. It's a new app on your phone kind of thing. Whereas in the unchecked app, users can go and just search if they really want to um, a powerlifting coach or a nutritional uh, coach, um, you know, plyometrics, yoga coach, and all of those coaches and those trainers are already on the app and they can just immediately connect with you and inquire on kind of like what your services are and what you offer. And then once you guys connect, they, that trainer gets access to all your data already that you're, you know, using that app day to day. That trainer will have access to creating plans for you, creating fitness uh, meal and fitness plans for you and getting access to all of that data. That's super cool, man. So it's almost like a community already that exists and you get to almost like kind of leverage that. So let's say I'm a user uh, and I, I don't have a coach and I'm on unchecked. Um, I can go on there and I can be like, Hey, I'm going to have unchecked, write me trainings. Does it do that for the user perspective too? If I was like, Hey, set, write me a, a push day where I'm doing, you know, X, Y, or Z movements. Oh, and by the way, I have a shoulder injury or something like that. Could, yeah. could the AI yeah. kind of create that for me? That's exactly kind of how it works, right? So when you download the app, there's no requirement to get linked up with a trainer, a real trainer, if you don't want to, right? You can just do it all through the AI, do it all personally and build your own plans. But exactly as you said it, you go through a questionnaire, right? And the, we ask you like, what, what do you like? What do you, uh, what do you enjoy kind of exercises? What exercises do you hate? How many times a week do you want to work out? What are your what are your goals and a series of other kind of questions just as a personal trainer would do to try to personalize your plan? Um, we ask about your injuries too. Like for me personally, I've been struggling a lot with um, knee, like my knee pain, right? And so I can't do a lot of like squats um, and things where I have to push weight away from my body because it irritates my knees. So I put that into the app and, I, and along with all of my other details, and then it generates a whole plan for you, you know, uh, um, uh, a two month plan generates it for you right there and you can kind of edit it on the fly. If like, you're not feeling something one day, you're like, man, I really don't want to do X, Y, Z exercise today. You just put it right into the app. It'll swap out for something similar muscle group, um, as a replacement to that. Wow. That's super cool. And then you can track all of your weights and metrics if you are in that app. And then if you decided that you did want to work with a coach and get a more I don't want to see personalized touch, but personalized touch or somebody else to kind of hold you accountable. They'd have access to all that data later on to kind of see where you're at and where you're going. 
that's exactly it, right? So, yep, they'll get access to all that data, all that data, as you said. Um, and then they give you that personalized touch, that human touch, because some people really do need that um, that human touch to that encouragement, right? That accountability of like, hey, like, you know, you're doing great, keep it up kind of thing. Um, and that's not something that, uh, that uh, you just can't, you can't get that anywhere else from unless you're interacting with somebody. Um, so some people will, will want to go down that route and um, work directly with a trainer. That trainer will get access to all of that data, their macros, their, their weights. Um, and that trainer will have the ability to write their own plan. And, you know, the AI might provide something and it'll be a good starting point for the trainer to actually say, well, you know what? No, let's, let's do this or let's do this or kind of thing. Nate, this is super cool, man. Uh, it's got my gears kind of turning a ton. And full disclosure to anybody who ends up listening to this, I had no idea exactly what Nate did before this call. I kind of wanted to record it and figure it out live. So you guys are seeing my kind of initial reaction of like, oh, man, this is like super cool. Uh, and something that you know, I'm interested in from a coach and a potential user perspective. So I'm going to ask you, you know, what else does this do? Like, what are do you have like community apps in there? Because I know you um, have that discord community that you kind of started for fitness professionals. Now, whether that was just people that you had found on Instagram or whatever kind of platform you decided, um, is there a similar like communal thing in there? And my follow-up question is, did you do this all by yourself or did you get all those buddies that were in the group chat to like do it with you? Like, I gotta, I gotta know about that too. Yeah. So for the, uh, community aspect of the app, yes, that's something we're developing right now. Um, to, to get live here, hopefully in, in, in the next couple months uh, or so. But yeah, you'll be able to, I don't know if you're familiar with like Strava, um, but you'll be able to like friend request people on the actual app. And as I was kind of alluded to in the beginning of, you know, exporting your specific workout, like my three day a week um, upper body workout plan that I have, I can just send that directly to my buddy and they'll be able to upload it into their app and then follow along. You know, we can either follow along together um, as kind of like a, a partner exercise type of thing, or they can follow it on their own, add their own workouts and things like that. There'll be chatting features um, to send videos and pictures as well between each other. So there'll be that community aspect as well as like in Strava, like you have like a timeline or in um, my fitness file, you also have a timeline where you can share with your followers and your friends um you know a pr or something like that or a recent badge that you achieved so that's the community aspect of the app and uh the discord as you mentioned is it was is is different actually um it was really to get connected with people in this space right um as you know like growing a following on any type of social media is a huge undertaking when you're starting from zero, right? It takes so much time, so much content, and just hours and hours of work. So I really started that Discord just to try to get people to connect people. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of kind of gimmick groups out there where it's like follow for follow, um, like these engagement groups that are kind of gimmicky. And I really wanted to make an organic space where we're sharing ideas. Um, you know, sharing best practices for those small creators that are, that, you know, aren't at that 10,000 follower threshold yet. Right. Like how, like what's working for me, let me share that with you. What's working for you. Like, let's grow together. That's kind of really what the discord was about. And that's when I reached out to you. Like, you know, I like, I saw your content. I was like, Oh wow, this guy's got great content. He's putting out really good stuff. Like I would really like to like learn from what all these other people are doing because when i was reaching out to people man i had like probably a hundred followers or something and people were like who's this like bum you know what i'm saying so um yeah it was uh but it, it's grown so much right the discord community now is at over 300 people um and i've met so many people in this space that are just genuine and um they are positive and that's what you really need around you when you're trying to do things like this a lot of small business owners a lot of people trying to start their own fitness brands their own personal training brands um just getting surrounded by that positive energy is such a it's just such a benefit when you're trying to do something like this for sure man i um you know w before i forget 
you doing this all by yourself or what? Because I I got like four tangents I want to go off of before yeah, I no I, I'm I'm working with uh, I'm working with some uh, team of people so it's not by myself definitely this it would be uh, I would still definitely be developing and coding if I had to do this alone so I, don't, <laughs> I, I have a team yeah cool um how many guys are on your team guys or girls um it's a team of about ten of us I would say okay nice um. That's super cool. And you're you're the driver. Was it your kind of idea in the in the making? Was it kind of a conglomerate and you guys have put your heads together? Like how's that work? Yeah, I would say that it was um I had the idea and I just didn't have the expertise to build it. So I just had to surround myself with people that had the expertise to really put this thing together and people that believed in the same vision that I had and um just yeah just put those people put those people in together the room give them kind of the direction the vision and just let them you know do what they're they're best at yeah let them be the smartest people in the room because yeah. it definitely ain't me dude so i'm, it's I'm with not you me there. either <laughs> no that's super cool um you know i've got like 20 other like things i wanted to talk about one was your comment about uh follower count versus you know we'll call like coaching prowess um I'm not going to name the name of the guy because I don't want to like put him out on blast. Not that there's going to be that many people that listen to this probably anyway, but I met a guy who runs a quote unquote, very successful uh, business, um, former CrossFit guy at a high rocks event that I was at. And I'll tell you what, man, that guy was only there just to have his own tire pumped up and have people recognize him. And you could tell, dude, you could tell like the energy he was putting off. He just wanted to kind of talk about what he I, it was funny. He tried to kind of like big time me. I had recognized the guy and then he came over to do like a brief interview with me. And he was like, Hey, you know, I'm so-and-so from, you know, this company, like you've probably heard of me. And I was just like, Nope, never, never heard of you. What are you? And it, <laughs> never it he kind of was like, it was kind of like taken aback. And it was just one of those things where I was like, I never want to be like that. You can never be like too good for anybody um, in that way. So you know, you reach out to me and we, this is probably to our own detriment. We respond to every direct message that we get, whether that's somebody asking for nutritional advice, whether that's somebody asking for whatever, like we're trying to give away a ton of free resources too. And you hit me up and I was like, man, the, the worst thing that happens is I, you know, respond to this guy and maybe he says something, he or she says something that's like not cool. And I'm like, all right, maybe we just like don't chat. But the best thing that happens is you end up dropping a dime of an app that I'm like, Oh man, this is something that I would be interested in using from a user and a trainer perspective. And then we kind of help each other grow and develop and get your message out there to people that, you know, could use it because, you know, I've got people in the fitness space that I know, and they'd be like, probably super interested in what you've got going on. So it's really, really cool to kind of hear that. And I just want to make sure that, you know, anybody who listens to this and you too, it's like, just because somebody has got 300,000 followers doesn't mean they can coach for shit. It doesn't mean that they're worth a damn. It just means that a lot of people see their stuff, which helps get the message out. But at the end of the day, I don't think it, it, it's not your value. You're not valued at that number. Um, I like to think of it like when I first started and, and I still would say that we don't have a big following. There's like 1600 people. And I think that's a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I Put like 1600 at, people in a room and see how big that's that what is. I'm saying. I'm like, bro, yeah. if you were in my house, I had 1600 people in my house. I'll be like, go fucking home, bro. Yeah, like, exactly. I don't want you guys here. You know what I'm saying? So I, I totally can understand like the numbers people get wrapped around the axle about how many views something gets or whatever. And it's just like, man, just think about the impact that you can have the impact you can have on somebody else. Um, the way that you could help them, you know, achieve whatever X, Y, Z they're trying to achieve. And yeah, I just think, you know, I wanted to make sure I hammered those two points home that just because somebody has a lot of followers doesn't mean they're a qualified coach, the right coach for you or whatever. And I'm not saying that I'm the answer for everybody else either, because that's definitely not the case. But um, there's definitely some great creators and coaches out there and, and people in the space that you may not know of just because they're not coming up on your explore page or whatever you use, you know? Yeah, no, that's exactly it, man. That's I, I don't think I could have said it better myself, you know, like they're in in every niche right but especially in the fitness niche i think there's a lot of people that um don't know what they're talking about a lot of the time you know putting out not uh, just bad information you right is number one and number two as you kind of said people that um might like look down on others 
based on their following or whatever the case may be. And that is, you know, just never a positive thing to be around, never um, something that you, the type of people that you want to surround yourself with. So it's so, it's so important that I, or, you know, that you, I meet people that are genuine, right? Um, that in this space, right, that we can kind of lean on and um, bounce ideas off of. And that, like I said, is really kind of that community aspect that I try to build the the discord around um, to get people connected with each other. So, yeah, I mean, you couldn't, I, you, I couldn't have said it better, man. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think it's super cool. Like the stuff that you guys got going on too. So I'm going to ask you the hard question and I want to put you on the spot. So it like blink twice. If you like, if I ask this to you and you're like, Oh, I can't answer that right now. But what are you guys, uh, what's the deciding point for the app? Is it going to be a free app that people download and you guys get ad money off of? Are you going to do subscription bases? Talk to me about kind of how the model looks, at least where you guys are right now. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a, b a little bit of both, right? Um, just like most apps, I feel like these days, there's going to be free options that are available to people. Um, and then there will be those premium features that we spend a lot of time on that, you know, we we think that are are that we think that those features are kind of the best that we have to offer and that will be available uh to people so it'll be a definitely a combination of both yeah cool but we want to but we want to get we want to have that free version of the app that people find value in we don't want somebody to download the app and be like oh it's free i get like you know one two weeks free um on this app and then after that it, it's useless to me right i want the, the free version of the app too for people to find value in it because we are trying to build this this community this this base of users putting everybody onto the onto one platform where they can connect chat with each other um you know make these meal plans fitness plans and uh, track their progress along the way yeah that's awesome man it's super cool how that's kind of coming along um what are some of the you know, and I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole because I want to learn a little bit more about you. We've been talking a lot about your business, but my last probably business question for you is going to be like, you know, when you decide what those features are going to be between a paid app and a free app, um, what are some of the things that you guys have considered? Like, is that going to be like the AI features are going to be something that's a paid edition or if a trainer is going to come out um, and be like, hey, I'm going to coach five people. It's going to be this much for a monthly subscription. If I'm going to coach 10 or 20 or 50 or whatever that kind of threshold looks like like how does that how does that model look um for you guys moving forward yeah i think it'll be about um especially from the trainer side as you said about scalability how many you know how many people do you want to coach at a time um that'll definitely have an impact on you you know the monthly subscription cost as from the as from the user side um for access to ai it might just be uh, limited access or, or no access, you know, limited in the fact of like, maybe you only get it, you know, one or two plan, two types of generation, like plan generations, not unlimited um, reworking and things like that. Yeah, cool. No, I think that's great. Now, uh, to pivot a little bit, I want to ask a little bit about you and your kind of health journey. You seem, you know, I've been following your stuff for a bit. I think I right immediately when you reached out i was like this guy seems like he's got some a good head on his shoulders and i'm interested to see what he says um or and and to talk to you honestly that's kind of why i reached out to to do this in the first place um i want to hear a little bit about kind of your own like personal health journey you talk about having some knee things bugging you now and what kind of keeps you going in in the gym and and the passion for that and what you're kind of into training wise also yeah so i think i really started working out probably when I was around like 13 years old, sometime in middle school. And my parents had a uh, bench press, you know, with some free weights in our basement and maybe like a, a dip bar and some dumbbells. Like, I mean, like a decent setup for a home gym, right? You know, you think back 15 years ago, right? Um, so... After school, my uh, some of my buddies and I, we would just, it was more of a social thing. And uh, we would kind of just go hang out, start working out together. Um, we took like in eighth grade, we took like a fitness class on like, just like kind of like the basics. And uh, this was also at the time, like we were going into high school. We we're like, yo, we like, we got to get big. Like we can't just be scrawny. 
you know, or like we're not, I'm not about to get picked on as a freshman, right? Like, and you need to be so, able to pick up chicks, dude. Come on, yeah. you know the real reason. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, yeah. right? So, um, and it was like, yeah, it was a social thing. It was just fun. They would come over, we'd hang out, um, you know, we'd lift for a little bit, and then we'd just chill. So, and it kind of continued to just be a uh, a social thing. And then going into high school, continuing to just kind of stay stay active, stay fit. Played sports in high school. Um, a little bit of What'd track, you play? football, and track football and uh, baseball. Baseball all four years, track and football for only a couple. So okay, um, but yeah, just like trying to stay stay fit, like you know, be a better athlete kind of thing. And then I would say that it really kind of picked up my junior and senior year. Um, we had a just like a dedicated weightlifting class, and it was uh, we had this wall uh, in our gym in our weight in our weight room. And uh, it was called the iron. It was called an iron eagle. An eagle was our mascot, and you were an iron eagle if you got a, str- a strength index over a specific number. I don't know if you've ever calculated strength indexes before or whatever. Um, but essentially, you we did four lifts: squat, bench, power lift, or um, power clean, and uh, deadlift. You'd add up those numbers and you'd multiply them by your weight, and uh, by a specific number for your weight. And if it came out to a number over 700, you would get put on this like wall, right? So it was like this achievement. And then they would also track it. Yeah, they would also (laughs) track it for like the top people ever to like come through the high school and things like that. But it was a competitive thing, like between me and my buddies. And uh, to this day, I always give him shit because I tell him that he never made it on that wall, but I did. So um, (laughs) he, I can't let him, I can't let him live that down. Um, but I hope yeah, he's I mean, on the honestly, team. I hope he's on the tech team that developed the app too. I hope you brought him with you, and you can always <laughs> throw that back and be like, "Hey, man." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, just always like a social thing, and um, from there, just staying active, staying fit. Hold on, one sec. You're gonna get some water, man. You got time. <laughs> Yeah, so um, continued in college. I went to James Madison University. I don't know where you're from, but um, it's a school in Virginia. And they had like this super sweet gym. And it was just, it's always been fun. It's never been a chore. Um, and I think that's really important for people to understand. It, it, you, it should never be a chore. You know, an active lifestyle should never feel like a chore. You should always try to do things that you enjoy. Because if you do the things that you enjoy, you'll want to go out and you want to, it'll be an escape or, or a hobby or a release for you. It won't be um, stress. Not saying that every day I love going to the gym and every day I love to do this, this, and this, because that's not the case, right? Um, but for the most part, it's, it's you know, the thing that I enjoy doing. Yeah, for sure. We like to say when fitness becomes the result and not the you know, the intent or the driver, then you're kind of, you're kind of getting, you're kind of figuring it out, right? Like if the goal is, uh, is to go work out versus the goal is just to live a healthy lifestyle. It makes a very different thing. And especially, you know, if you, if you like playing basketball and you get fit by playing basketball, then that's kind (laughs) of checking, killing two birds with one stone. And that's how you kind of keep going and doing it for life, you know? So totally agree. Yeah. That mindset change, right? Like I'm not, working out to like have big muscles, although that is like, you know, a secondary goal, but like I'm working out to have a healthy lifestyle so that when I'm older, right, like I can, you know, still be moving around and, and, you know, and healthy. Yeah, man. I, um, I think that, you know, for better, for worse, I think a lot of young men, especially get into the weightlifting game and women probably too, actually, um, just to look good naked. You know, I feel like that's kind of like the, yeah. the underlying thing when you start you're 13 14 years old and you know you, part of that is the thing but you know personally for me and it sounds like kind of for you as well is the the mold has kind of shifted to now it's like hey how can i move for life um and you know looking great and is, is definitely always going to be there i don't think there's ever going to be a part of it that's not some a bit of vanity that that comes into it that's kind of human nature i think for most people but at the end of the day if you can figure out a way to look, move and feel your best over time, um, and still kind of do the things that you love, then, you know, that's kind of the, the golden ticket, if you will, to keep going. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Cool, man. What, uh, I got to ask, like, what's next for unchecked? Like what's, 
you guys have a bunch of stuff that's kind of looking on the horizon for new drops and releases. You just got the app launched, which is cool. I see some swag on your on your chest there, repping the brand, which I dig. Um, I gotta <laughs> I gotta hear what's what's next for the team of ten and and Nate at the at the helm. Yeah, I think that we are just very very focused right now on getting out new features and figuring out what what people want to see, right? Getting people onto the platform is is kind of the number one priority now. Getting feedback from users to what what they want to see and um and our idea of kind of where the app is moving forward, getting those features developed. Um but like yeah, that's kind of our number one priority right now. Just going through a successful launch, getting a lot of people on the platform and um getting that feedback. Um, you know, that real feedback from people on you know, this is good, this is great, or this sucks. Like we don't, this is not, shouldn't be on the app. Like, why did you do it this way? Um, yeah, because that's, that's you know, you, you develop something for a long time. You, that's what you really need is to get that feedback from people. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I'm excited for you guys, dude. And after the discussion, you know, I feel like you guys have a, a good direction and it's coming from the right place too. So it doesn't matter if you got a thousand people following the page or a hundred thousand people following the page, man. You guys are doing good stuff. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I really appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. And you said you're you went to school at JMU. Are you an East Coast guy? Have you been there kind of your whole life or what? Yeah, so I went to school. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, I mean, I was born on the West Coast. I'm I'm a I'm a Chargers fan. Um, I got a lot of family out on the West Coast, but I uh, went to high school. Middle, I went to basically like elementary school to high school to college, all on the East Coast. Um, school in Virginia uh for high school and uh college so yeah but now actually i live in miami so it's like this fitness community is on steroids i tell you it's, it's insane down here yeah it's wild i actually primarily grew up in maryland and now i'm out on the west coast for now at least until i get moved out uh from california but um i've got some buddies down in miami that i've seen uh pretty recently and the scene down there is pretty wild i mean it's like Everywhere you turn is another juice head out in Miami oh, yeah. with a fake tan, you know? Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's just different. <laughs> it's different down here. It just takes some getting used to, but it, yeah, it is what it is. For sure. Um, I'd be remiss to say, you know, like uh, acknowledging the support of a spouse uh, or a potent- soon-to-be spouse, I guess, because you said that you're engaged. Congratulations on that. Thank tell you. me a little bit about Tell me a little bit about your support system and making, because I know the entrepreneurial life is not easy. Tell me a little bit about how that's been uh, over yeah, the years. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely have to to shout out my fiance. Um, you know, M- Melissa and I met um, about five years ago, um, right just right after I had graduated college, and um, she has been you know super super supportive, and it's been so important to this entrepreneurial journey, as you said to just have somebody that's so close to you as a, as a partner that is, you know, 100% supporting the decisions that you make. Um, and this journey, because it, this journey is not linear. This journey has ups and it has downs and it has really low lows and really high highs. And just having somebody that is there just saying like, Hey, like it's going to be good or like, Hey, I believe in you is, is so important. So she's been great. And, um, she's, you know, I, I feature her in, um, a lot of the videos sometimes cause she's got great ideas of like, Hey, you know, you should do this for a video. And a lot of the times her, uh, her videos on my social media page do better than, uh, than the ones that I come up with. But, um, yeah, no, she's, she's super, super great, super supportive. So, um, yeah, I'm really lucky there. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I can't I can't agree with you anymore. I feel like it's so important to have that support system coming from a partner or, you know, business group or, you know, some sort of a coach in general. I'm curious, like, do you have a coach that you work with now? Are you uh, are you somebody that's got, you know, down in Miami? I'm sure there's a ton, too, that you could find down there. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of uh, coaches. I don't have one now. Um, I did have one in the past that I was working with for a little bit, maybe a couple years ago. But recently, I have not. Um, I've have not had one. Honestly, I've I've, I've kind of uh, been trying to use my app as much as possible in the sense of as a as a user, right? To like try to get in the mind of like how people are going to use this. 
um, to, you know, try to make it the best that I can. Um, but yeah, I don't have a coach right now. Something I'd be um, looking at maybe here soon. My fiance, she, she does some coaching or not. She does the coaching. She has a coach and she's um, kind of shared a lot of the things that she's learned through that, um, whether it's macro tracking and things like that with me. So that's been pretty great. Yeah, that's awesome. I was going to say, I just teed it up for you to be like, unchecked is my coach, dude, what's up? And then just like pull the shirt, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> yeah, no, that's super cool that you're using it from the user perspective. I feel like that's the best way for you to really uh, get a handle on kind of what you're doing and where the vision's going is by having a really good idea of what it would be like for, for the end user. And, and you know, you got to believe in the product, man. And that's that's super cool that you're using it. and And it's been going well so far, too, so. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, I feel like I have to, um, I try to be the biggest critic of it, right? Because I know that as soon as you put, as soon as you put something out into the world, you know, it people will roast it, right? And I want to make it as roast proof as possible, which is I know is <laughs> it is impossible. Um, but just do the best that I can and um, take that feedback and, um, you know, roll with it. That's cool, man. Well, Nate, I don't want to keep you too much longer. I appreciate your time. Uh, I feel like this was super cool. I will say you're wise beyond your years, man. It's cool to it's cool to be in the, you know, to share a conversation like this with somebody else who's in an entrepreneurial space. Um, it's it's refreshing to hear someone coming from a good place. Um, I uh, definitely would like to chat with you at some point about what your app looks like and see if we can kind of send this out to anybody else who would be interested in kind of hearing about it and and uh learning more from you so definitely send me your social media stuff what we'll do is we'll drop all of his all of nate and uh unchecks information in the show notes at the end of the page but or at the end of the episode uh real quick i just want to say like um if you could give somebody one piece of uh health and wellness advice or business advice i guess i'll kind of leave the aperture pretty wide open um, what would you give them? What would you say to somebody who is in an entrepreneurial world or starting a health journey as a as a bit of advice that you'd leave them with? I would say that the biggest piece of advice is to just start, right? Um, I think that it can be so overwhelming, especially these days, you know, when people are putting out so much content about do this, do this, um, try this workout, do this meal plan, follow this, whatever. I think it's just so important. Like, if this is something that you're interested in, uh, trying to live a healthy lifestyle, just start. Like, you know, just start by walking every day. It doesn't have to be ten thousand steps. Like, you know, whatever the recommendation is. If you're if you're doing two thousand a day, try to do four thousand. You know what I'm saying? Like, just start to try to build those habits and build on that. Because as we kind of discussed earlier on, it's it's about the the lifestyle that you're trying to. Uh, to build, you know, being healthy for, you know, your kids and your grandkids one day and showing and being an example to them. So you have to build that foundation and you have to build those good habits. Um, and that just takes time and you have to be patient with yourself because you won't get there overnight, especially if you're starting from zero. Yeah. What about, uh, what about business advice with you being an entrepreneur and business guy? I wanted to know what, what your uh, piece of advice is for any young, uh, entrepreneurs out there. I think business is kind of the same thing. Um, just if you have an idea that you believe in, right, um, go after it, right? Because somebody always, I always get the question of like, well, what if it doesn't work out, right? Or, you know, what if you spend all this time and it doesn't work out? And my response to always to that uh, question is, number one, um, I'll be right back where I started just living, you know, ab like this average life, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like I'll be, I'll be keep working my day job and I'll keep doing all these things that I'm already doing that you know, we are already, a lot of people are already doing. So I can just like kind of stay average. Number one, number two is what if it does work out? You know, what if I do build this, um, this biz, this business that I can, um, impact so many people in a positive way and have something that I can show to my family and to my kids, like, you know, this is something that you can accomplish and start to build that, you know, generational wellness mindset, that generational, um, you know, foundation of a business to pass on to, to, to your children and, and, you know, have that kind of, 
um, going on through your family. So that's kind of always been my mindset of it, on it, of not about what if it doesn't work out. It's always been like, it will work out um, because I'm going to stay persistent at it and I'm going to stay po have a positive mindset along the way because I know what I'm working towards. I'm not working to buy that Ferrari or buy that Rolls Royce. Like that's not, that's never been my objective. My objective has always been to get, to have a freedom of time and to have freedom of time to do the things that I want with the people that I care and that I love about or that, that I love. So that's always been my mindset and my why and my number one priority as to why I work on my business so hard. Yeah, man. You just mic drop, dude. I uh, I couldn't agree more with a lot of the stuff that you said. It's all about freeing up that time. It's the only resource that everybody kind of has the same amount of when you wake up in the morning, you know, God willing that you're uh, able to live another day and you everybody gets the same 86,400 seconds in a day to, to work off of and you can yep. choose to use it how you want. Um, but you're not going to get any more of it. You know, you're always going to be older right now. And the best time to, what do they say? Best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. And the next best time is right now. So yeah. <laughs> keep getting, keep getting after it and showing up, man. Well, yeah. Nate, I really appreciate your time. I know we kind of went a little bit over, but I'm going to drop all your guys' stuff here in the show notes. And then, uh, hopefully we can connect soon again when, uh, unchecked is, is riding high on the top downloads over on whatever app platform you guys are on. Yeah, no, that sounds really great. I mean, I, I appreciate you taking the time to just to chat with me. Um, this has been an awesome opportunity. I think that you guys have a lot of uh, great content that you put out. And, and um, I'm excited to see, you know, where you take your business and um, and the impact that you have on all the people that you know that you touch and surround. Cool, man. Appreciate it. All right, dude. We'll uh, wrap this up. If any of you guys uh, want to follow us up, we've got all of our links are going to be down below in the show notes too. And we'll see you guys in our next episode. Peace. I think I hit stop on that. Cool, man. That was really.